Hello everyone. This week's First Chapter Friday is called 23 Minutes by Vivian Van Veld. It is a super short read, so if you're in the market for something really tiny, since we're coming up on spring break, this might be a really good choice for you. So, here's the description. 15-year-old Zoe has a secret ability. She can travel back in time 23 minutes to relive events she wants to change. But Zoe has learned from experience that this is more curse than gift. Things almost never end well, and people just tend to think she's crazy. But when she steps into a bank to get out of the rain and finds herself in the middle of a robbery gone horrifyingly wrong, Zoe knows she's the only one who can help. The problem is, she has only a limited number of tries to make things right. Plus, a single mistake could get her killed, and not even time travel could bring her back from that. Zoe has always considered herself a loser, about as far from a heroine as a girl can get. Now she has to dig deep to find a strength she never thought she possessed. Chapter one. The story starts with an act of stunning violence. Or, well, maybe not exactly. Maybe exactly the story starts when Zoe walks into the bank, except she doesn't recognize it as a story yet. She just knows the sky has opened up a late autumn downpour so that she feels as though she's standing under a shower at the campground. The one that's strong and steady but has only two temperatures, cold and very cold. Zoe has never understood the point of camping. Haven't people evolved for thousands of years precisely so that they do not have to sleep on the ground or pee outdoors or have to eat half raw food that's been charred over a fire? But the people who run group homes for teens, nobody wants to foster, always seem to feel that roughing it is a way to build community spirit and to bond with the disadvantaged youth of our city. As though they weren't in a group home exactly because they'd had a rough time already. So he feels that an overnight at a Holiday Inn, hanging out in the hot tub, ordering room service, and watching on-demand movies would make a much more satisfying building and bonding experience. Not that anyone has ever asked Zoe. So the rain starts fast and hard, and just a degree or two warmer than sleet, and Zoe dashes through the first door she comes to and finds herself in a bank. That's more a prelude than a beginning to the story, the forward, the setup. Then there are the supporting characters, the snotty bank teller and the full of himself bank guard, as well as the one bank customer, the one who stands out from the fewer than a dozen other customers. The young guy Zoe immediately pegs as an up and coming business exec or a junior lawyer at a prestigious law firm, the kind that does not advertise on TV. Zoe prides herself on being able to evaluate people quickly. It's been a necessity for survival. But this guy has an engaging smile and takes the time to speak kindly to her, even after she walks into him, steps on his foot, and drips rainwater on him and his expensive shoes. Lastly, and of course, there's the bank robber. Although, Zoe doesn't know yet that he is a bank robber. Not much here to say, story. It doesn't really pick up speed until the robbery starts to go awry. Until they're all within 20 feet of each other, even closer if you're willing to discount that one bank teller. Without her, they're really a tight cluster. Zoe on her knees on the floor, the guard with his gun drawn and aimed at the head of a would-be robber, the would-be robber with his gun drawn and aimed at the head of a guy who was nice to Zoe. Should I say it now? She wonders several times until finally, after all the shouting and gun waving and threatening to shoot anyone and everyone, the robber's attention is firmly on someone else besides Zoe. Finally, she sees she might actually have a moment or two in which to use her special ability and get away. If only that opportunity weren't a result of the young CEO, or whoever he was, intentionally stepping between her and the robber. Is he stupid or suicidal? Zoe asks herself. But this is unfairly diminishing him. His eyes are blue and wide and have enough fear in them to say he knows exactly what he's done. Enough defiance to declare that he'd make the same choice again. And that holds Zoe where she is. The situation gets even worse, with more shouting, more threatening. And then there are two simultaneous shots 
or too close to simultaneous to make a difference, leaving Zoe splattered in blood of both thief and customer that she'd almost have time to grow to life, leaving Zoe splattered in blood of both thief and the customer she'd almost have time to grow to life, not to mention bits of bone. That's how the story starts. So that is 23 minutes. So 23 minutes, again, super short, super action packed. Um, so it's really part mystery, part action survival. Um, if you're a fan of books like I Survived, even though it's not a natural disaster, you might find that you really enjoyed this too. So if you enjoy this, come and check out 23 minutes from your library.